Well, everybody, I'm back and I'm excited about my very special guest. You better put your seatbelt on. You know, everybody who comes uh, to the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show, we know that they are sent by spirit for who? who? For you. Just for you. You know, everything you're seeking is seeking you. And today we have just a phenomenal woman. I, I want to give honor to her. We have Dr. Patricia J. Crane. She's an international trainer and author and during her life, uh, transformational uh, journey, you know, she knew her whole purpose was to really serve others and to help others but how many y'all know you got to transform your own life first and that's what she did and she read louise louise hay book you can hear your life and guess what happened after that she had the privilege to meet louise personally and began studying with her and now she is the girl her company uh is the only company that can certify others to teach you can hear your life workshop she and her husband i think they've been to about 13 countries am i mm -hmm. right dr patricia mm -hmm. and, yep. and and the workshop leaders and coaches are in 70 countries she's also the author of two books if you're seeing this uh, ordering from the Cosmic Kitchen, the Essential Guide to Powerful Nourishing Affirmations. We all love affirmations. And she's also the author of 11 Steps to uh, Achieve Your Goals. She has such wisdom, and she's going to share some of that with us today. Dr. Patricia Crane, welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Well, Cousins, thank you so much. It's I'm delighted to be with you today and just excited about sharing. What a, an amazing life. My goodness that, that you've had, and we're just going to delve right into it. But uh, Dr. Patricia is in California in the mountains, and she said, Constance, it's snowing. And I said, <laughs> I didn't know it snowed in California. <laughs> <laughs> it is today. <laughs> Well, tell before before I, I, I ask you all of these questions for listeners, but listeners, I want you to open up your heart, open up your spirit, because whatever you've been searching for, looking for, praying about, thinking about, worrying about, you know, you're going to receive your answer today. So here you are on your life's journey, and you read uh, Louise Hayes' book. Mm -hmm. And it transformed you. So how did you meet her? Well, actually, I, I had read her book. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'll show you my book because it's held together with a rubber band. Wow. <laughs> this is okay. my original one. <laughs> you know, I do have another one, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, a friend of mine called and said that she was going to a holistic health meeting, breakfast meeting, 630 in the morning, and asked if I'd like to go. And quite honestly, I'm not really a morning person. So I said, you better find out who's speaking if I think it's worth getting up for. And she called me back and said, Louise, hey, well, okay, I'm there. So I talked to Louise at the end of that program. I got on her mailing list. And then she was doing not just two-day workshops then. She had started doing one-week and 10-week intensives. And this was at the time of the AIDS crisis. Mm -hmm. And Louise very that. courageously stepped out you mm -hmm. know, to help. And so I went to the first couple of intensive that she did. And after that, she asked me to be on staff. So I studied with her for a number of years following that. And we're going to talk about how that, what that evolved into. But it was one of those things, Constance, where, you know, I was following my own guidance. Mm. And I had started really getting into that intuitive space because I started meditating. That was actually my first step in transformation was a meditation practice. But I had also made a decision, as you mentioned when you introduced me, thank you so much for that lovely introduction, is that I had made a commitment earlier in my life that I would be of service. And mm. I had no idea what that even meant at that time. But I feel like all the way along my life, I was guided into different jobs that were being of service somehow to underserved populations. But when I met Louise, there was this inner sense that said, this is it. 
this is where uh, I have to go from here. So well, you know, I, well, that's yeah. so that's so powerful. And I just want to uh, 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 touch with everybody who's listening to us around the world, Dr. Patricia. You never know. And what Dr. Patricia said is in those quiet times. It's when you're meditating that the spirit may say, go here. I mean, she could have said no to her friend. Like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> Six o'clock in the morning, you better get a life or, or something like that. But, you know, the spirit is always speaking, guiding, giving us insight and downloading. And I believe putting us on our pathway to our own destiny and purpose. You know, that is so encouraging to me and to other people I'm sure who are either watching or listening. Mm -hmm. Because we really never know um, ahead of time where things are going to lead us, you know, where spirit's going to lead us. And truthfully, I never had the thought that I would be going to 13 different countries sharing Louise's work. Um, I'd always wanted to travel though, I have to say, because we never went anywhere when I was growing up. So <laughs> I developed this real passion for travel and I read all kinds of travel books, fiction, nonfiction, et cetera. But certainly working with Louise, that piece of the desire in my heart, you know, that i had had for so many years, that was fulfilled to be traveling to different places. That is so interesting. You know, the Bible says God would give you the desires of your heart. And mm -hmm. sometimes we just can't figure out which way it's going to come. So I saw on a video on YouTube where Louise said to you, uh, that woman right there, Dr. Patricia Crane, you know, the video I'm talking about, I do. she's I the do. one who I've chosen to, to, to teach this all over the world. What did that feel like for you at that moment? Oh my goodness. It, it was absolutely amazing. Um, we were at a workshop actually that she was doing with Cheryl Richardson in London. And I had decided at the last minute to fly over there because I really wanted to see them together in that two-day workshop. And when Louise pointed me out, I just felt so honored, um, so privileged, and just, you know, thankful and grateful to her for trusting me to take her work forward. But she had to see something in you, mm -hmm. and she had to be led by her own intuition mm -hmm. that this is the one that can be trusted, you know, with my legacy Mm -hmm. and, and and with everything else that's going on. And once again, I'm speaking to listeners, you know, you never know, always just do your best mm -hmm. and serve. And some of y'all trying to, trying to coerce and make stuff happen. But the fact that Dr. Patricia was once again led by her intuition to go to London is it, it was London, right? I mean, she could have, yes. could have said, I'm not going to London. I'm, I'm not doing mm -hmm. that, you know, but just being led. And so sometimes manifestation, I believe if you're tuned in to your own intuition and to God or spirit, manifestation is effortless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and what you're saying is so, so important. Uh, Constance about so often people are trying to make things happen mm -hmm. and you know my husband and I worked together and uh, there were several years back somebody said well what was your business plan <laughs> <laughs> and we laughed and said you know what we never had one we just followed what people asked for we followed our intuition and we just did the best we could and so you know I'm not saying don't make a business plan for some people, I'm sure that's very, very important, but it wasn't something that we had done. And we followed something that Louise always said. She said, I answered my phone. I listened to what people asked for. And wow. so that was very important to say, what are, what are people asking for? And that's actually how the training program started because when Louise was on the Oprah Winfrey show, I'm sure you remember that. Mm -hmm. She got so busy, she wasn't having time to do her two-day workshops anymore, or even the intensive she'd been doing. So at that point, she called me and three others that had been working with her and said, how would you like to start, um, you know, leading my two-day workshop? And Hay House will send you out to different places. And I actually ended up going to England and for the two-day workshop. And it was the people there that said, you know, this workshop has changed our lives so much over and above the book even. Can you lead a training program? 
Wow. Amazing. So, mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and that nugget that you shared about, you guys know I'm big on planning and writing everything down, but I believe that all of that uh, needs to be submitted and you don't have to, you don't have to hustle. You don't have to grind because if from your heart, you want to serve people and you want to help people or you have a product, a good or a service. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a marketing plan, but somebody will find you if you offering services, mm -hmm. goods and or products that people are really searching for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's actually where it starts. You know, I have a two tier life purpose program, actually. Um, and the first is that exactly what you're talking about, that you're guided to do something. And I believe mm -hmm. that if we start out with unconditional love and being of service, that those are the two overriding things for everyone. And then the next level for that is that each of us has our own skills and talents. So some people like yourself, you're so fantastic in interviewing, you know, that's a skill and a talent that you have to be of service. Someone else might be really involved with nutrition, someone else with fitness, someone else with other things that, you know, are being of service in some way, but it's that overriding purpose that I think is important for people to understand and to say, okay, this is my dedication. And now what are my skills and talents that I can take that forward? I, I think that's so powerful. Well, speaking of love, uh, uh, Louise talked a lot about self-love so we're going to move toward uh, teaching people how to manifest so for folk who are trying to manifest what's the whole self-love vibration and why is that important mm -hmm. in manifestation well and one of the things that louise said of course is that the foundation is loving and approving of yourself and that when you do that other things begin to flow. Now, there's certainly a bunch of techniques that we can talk about that. Are okay, very go ahead. But, you know, the first part of it is being aware of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And everyone has this sort of automatic thing that goes on and on and on and on and on in their heads. And the awareness is a, a really fundamental skill for starting to pay attention to what are your thoughts. And Louise's first way to love yourself is to stop all criticism. Stop it. Now that's not so, that's easy to say, right? But not so easy to do. So the first part of it is paying attention. What are you thinking about yourself that's negative that you'd like to change? And then begin to do an affirmation saying, I love and approve of myself. Now for a lot of people starting that out right away is gonna seem pretty difficult. Yeah. So I add an extra word in there, maybe two. I am willing to love and approve of myself. I am willing to love oh, and approve of myself. And that feels a little easier when you're first mm -hmm. starting to talk to a lot of people. But paying attention to your thoughts, noticing when you're criticizing yourself, thinking negatively about anything, and then coming to, okay, I am willing to change. I'm willing to change. And I am willing to love and approve of myself. And the other word I love in affirmations is I easily... <laughs> because I love that word easy easy <laughs> I easily <laughs> I easily change I easily am guided to change I easily change my behaviors I easily change whatever it is that you want to change because if you keep saying oh it's so hard to do this mm -hmm. then it's going to be hard to do it right so I love the word easily in affirmations I easily choose the th foods that nourish me I easily choose new habits I easily choose new thoughts whatever that happens to be easily well, you are the queen of affirmations, and I was reading, talk to us about affirmations and why they are important. I was reading your book, Ordering from the Cosmic Kitchen, mm -hmm. and the essential guide to powerful and nourishing affirmations. Talk about affirmations and how can people use them? How can we make them nourishing and okay. work for us? Well, and actually, uh, Louise was called the queen of affirmation. So I'm not sure I want to take that title. Well, well, <laughs> okay. you're, the, well you're the princess then. Oh, I didn't know the that. Then. <laughs> I didn't That's know fine. that. <laughs> that is fine. Um, and 
That again is some a technique, a specific technique for changing your thoughts, changing your mind to actually use positive thoughts, which we call affirmations. And you know, Constance, when I first started with con con affirmations, and maybe you did too, it wasn't a very well-known technique, really. Mm -mm. But now, a lot of people know. I, I mean, maybe the majority know about using affirmations, but they really are a technique. Not only do they, you know, change the thoughts that you have, but they literally are changing the synapses in your brain. There's been some research on that. And so the more thoughts you have about a certain area, the more synapses there are in your brain. And that's why you have to remind yourself so much at the beginning when you're doing affirmations, because your brain wants to go down those negative train, I call them train tracks, you know, this okay. automatic sort of train tracks. And your brain wants to go down those automatic train tracks and you want to create new ones. So you want to create these new synapses. And that's why practicing affirmations very specifically, like in the morning or in the evening, I love to do them along with my, my um, meditations because then I'm in a deeper space where they're really more powerful. And the other thing is that affirmations are meant to be not just in this brain here, but in your heart. Oh, you read my mind. <laughs> in your heart. Because if they're just up here, they're just a mental kind of rote thing that's not as powerful. But when they're really in your heart, and what is it that you do want to manifest? First, you want to love yourself. And then there are areas of every person's life, some better, some not so, not so good and challenging, that you want to make changes as well. So you start with the affirmations, but again, they're done from your heart, not from just your head. So when you said that, I've been just last night, I was studying, I was listening to Dr. Greg Braden and he was mm -hmm. talking about when you marry thought and, and emotions and, and, and the Bible talks about heartfelt. Mm -hmm. And so when someone does an affirmation, you can just give me any example, let's just say around money. Cause one mm -hmm. of your chapter chapters in your book is how to order money and other material stuff from the cosmic kitchen mm -hmm. how would that be heartfelt for somebody who may be struggling with lack right now well because what you're bringing up is adding in another word to your oh. affirmations trust mm. trusting trusting and and that again is you know goes to the heart level because in the spiritual level because too often we're, we're relying on our ego minds to say, okay, I need more money. How can I figure that out? And spirit has a plan for you. Mm -hmm. you know, there is a cosmic energy that's right there that you can connect with. And so those also are said, you know, from your heart, I am trusting that more money comes into my life and I'm guided to whatever I need to do. If I need to manifest any, if I need some action. And I don't mean going to Las Vegas <laughs> 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 and spinning the wheel. Um, that's not really what we're talking about. Um, one of the affirmations that I really enjoy giving people is unexpected income is always coming my way. Mm -hmm. And you'd be amazed at what has happened when people use that and don't try to make it happen. You know, we're back to that again, aren't we? But really trusting in your heart. And just trusting that you are guided in whatever ways you need to be. So I know it sounds to some people like, but I need something now. And you, you can, you just need to get back to, okay, be specific about what you need. I need the rent for this month. I'm trusting that that's coming to me. And then go forward from there. And I'll, I'll give you an example of one. That okay. Happened. Back when I was working with Louise, and I'd been to her intensives and I thought, well, I'd like to do a weekend, you know, a weekend program. And there was a retreat center near me. So I got in touch with them and I arranged to do the weekend workshop um, and was advertising that. And there wasn't much of the internet then to do it so easily, mm -hmm. but it was coming up to the point where I actually had to pay the uh, venue half of what the, the, treat, the retreat was going to be. And I went to my post office box and looked in and I was, I'd been figuring, here's where my ego mind was. I had said, okay, I need six more deposits to be able to get all the money that they <laughs> you know, are requiring. I get to my PO box and I look in there and there's one envelope. And I was like, oh no, there's only one envelope. Well, I <laughs> opened the envelope 
and it was full payment for a couple that was coming and that covered what I needed for the venue. Wow. So I let it go and I did have an idea in my own mind of what it was going to look like, but I was trusting that it would come in and it was completely unexpected. And I'm sure if the people are listening, your wonderful listeners are thinking, okay, let me try this, but let go of the expectations and really just get into that heart space and trusting the universe, spirit, God, whatever you want to call it. But there is that connection to a greater energy. And it's not just our ego minds. We have to get out of that. Wow. You know, that that's a great story because we're so fixed and analytical and logical <laughs> and one through seven. And kind of like in your heart, you said you wanted to travel. You you mm-hmm. probably didn't know that travel would be attached to your purpose of going around training everybody. I always say God has a myriad of ways to get mm-hmm. to you what you desire if you just open and let go and like you said that word trust just sort of calms us down dr patricia yeah well and i recently just sit, I put out a little video about you know for the beginning of the year telling people about the four words that i really do love to put in affirmations okay so, what are they and i am guided guided mm. i trust i easily and the one we haven't spoken about yet is I am grateful. Oh, okay. Now we're too much in the spirit now because that was going to be my next question to (laughs) you. Okay. This is getting kind (laughs) of about gratitude. Wow. Give us those four again and then teach us about gratitude. Okay. I am guided. Guided. I trust. I trust. I easily. I easily. And I am grateful. And I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. And the whole two words, I am, are so powerful because that really connects you with that energy of the universe. I am, because you are a part of that. You're not separate. You are a part of that energy. You know, we're all connected on another level, the spiritual level. And so when you use the words I am in any of your affirmations, it's really important. But gratitude is just such an important part of it. And when I was studying for my PhD in social psychology, it wasn't cr- clinical, although I went on to do that, but um, they didn't talk about gratitude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now there's a whole branch of positive psychology that actually has picked up some of Louise's techniques that I started using 40 years ago. And so psychology is coming along into you know, what some of the self-help techniques have been for a long time. And when you're grateful, Even when you're feeling challenges, when you're grateful, you're finding a more positive sense with yourself that you can also use to transform and transcend some of those challenges. I actually got an email the other day from a woman who uh, felt she needed to list all of the things that were going wrong in her life for me. Wow. (laughs) uh, Yeah, I know. And when I wrote back, I said, so what are you grateful for? Let's talk about that. So your focus can change because if our focus is on the negative, what's going to happen? That's more of what we get. Mm -hmm. And when you're grateful, you're focusing Mm -hmm. on the positive of what you already have in your life. And we certainly in this country have so much to be grateful for. We really do. And that just opens up, not only does it open up your heart, but there's some real evidence that it also creates that serotonin and the dopamine and all the positive chemicals in your brain. So that's another good part of it is that the brain is working in a positive way for you. So use those four I am Mm -hmm. statements in some affirmations for us. And I'm going to repeat behind you and listeners, (laughs) whether you're driving or wherever you're listening, if you own that, if you own the bullet train in Europe, you can repeat. People may look at you a little weird while you're sitting on the train, but Give Mm -hmm. us a couple of affirmations. Okay, Um, let's start with I'm guided. So I am guided in the next steps for my business, for example. I am guided in the next steps for my business. Mm -hmm. Whatever that that might happen to be. And Mm -hmm. you may get a phone call that you weren't expecting or a letter or something, you know, you never know. Um, I am guided in the best ways forward in a particular relationship. If there's a difficulty in a relationship, you know, I'm guided in how to heal this relationship. 
Mm -hmm. And of course, Good we're word. in the month of February, which is typically the month of love and coming up on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. the 14th. However, self-love day is on the 13th. Oh, I didn't know that. And it is wow. self-love day. I don't know who created that, but it turns out um, it is self-love day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write that my down. My husband mm -hmm. and I are actually going to do a, a webinar that day on loving yourself. So self-love day, and that's the foundation. So I'm guided in the best ways to love and take care of myself. Mm. I'm guided in the best ways to create more health in my body. And I also like the word easily in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, I easily choose the foods that nourish me. That's one of the ones I love personally. I easily choose the foods that nourish me. Okay. And I trust myself. I trust spirit. I trust life to guide me forward in the most fulfilling ways for me the most fulfilling ways. And again, I had no concept of where my work with Louise would go when it first started. I just knew that of all the books I had read, hers was the best in terms of bringing together the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. I just thought it was the classic. And I had read a lot of self-help books up until that time, believe me, but I thought hers was the best. But I didn't really have a concept other than I wanted to share her work because I felt it was so powerful and transforming my life, transforming others. Let's see. Okay. And so I'm grateful. I am grateful for the love in my life right now. Mm -hmm. I am grateful for my friendships. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for the snow that's falling outside yeah. <laughs> in, in Lake Arrowhead for nourishing, nourishing the plants and, and what needs to be filling up the lake here. So we have a beautiful lake that needs to be filled. So I'm grateful. And you could spend a whole day just talking about, I am grateful, right? That is so true. So and you know, when you say it, I can feel the vibration and the peacefulness of it. Instead of like you said, the person who sent you the email Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the great late Dr. Wayne Dyer says, you know, if you focus, if you focus it in on and talking about what was, you're going to get more of that. If you focus in and talking about more of what is, what you're looking at, your 3D, you're going to get more of that. But if you're focusing in on what you desire and grateful for that, mm -hmm. gratitude is a powerful principle. Very powerful. Yeah. So for your listeners, you know, I encourage you to use use that i am grateful what is everything in your life that you're grateful for today and just notice how you feel as you do that and notice what you know comes to you because of that gratitude you know celine dion and for my international listeners the grammys is the, like the number one uh, music award uh ceremony and she's been really sick and as i understand not even able to sing for a couple of years but when she came out on the stage to give the album of the year award, that was her first time being in public, I believe, for almost a year. And mm -hmm. she said, I'm paraphrasing, people, be grateful just to be here. Mm -hmm. She said, I am so grateful just to be here and to be able to present. And I could feel that from her through the TV that she truly was because of where she's been physically. Yeah. And I actually did see that on the Grammys and it was a very powerful moment. It was very moving. So good. Mm -hmm. So what else can people do? I know you began meditating. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of people are saying, now what's your thought on this, Dr. Patricia, that your affirmations are more powerful when you're in that meditative theta state. Mm -hmm. So talk about that. What do oh, we I need to meditate or what, what do we need to be doing? Well, I absolutely believe that that's true because I started meditating at a time when I didn't really feel particularly spiritual or connected to anything, but I was totally stressed out. <laughs> I was very stressed <laughs> out from all the work I'd been doing. And, and I started meditating. Dear friend introduced me to it. And I found myself fairly soon just feeling a whole different energy for life. I mean, suddenly I was happy again. It was a beautiful day. I could connect with that spiritual self after a while, but I started thinking things and they would happen. Mm. And I didn't know I was doing affirmations at the time, 
But that led me on a search. And I did find some books because before Louise's, because hers wasn't even, you know, written yet. But I found books that said you create your reality and talked about affirmations. And so it was a huge revelation to me. And I was so excited. Okay, now I understand what's happening. So now um, I really love doing my meditation and then just, and the a meditation is just quiet and allowing myself to just be and connect with that greater energy. But then I'll do my affirmations at the end when I am in that deeper space yeah. and really feeling connected again, back to that heart space. So I love doing that as a combination. Uh, but I also love now listening to things on YouTube. I found some great affirmations on YouTube mm -hmm. and some meditations on YouTube. So I think whatever it helps people to really get into that quiet centered space is what you want to do. Um, one friend of mine who really was not into meditation or anything, but he said, I love to go out in nature. And when I'm out in nature, that's my meditation. So if that's what works for you, do that. But whatever works for you to be able to get into a more peaceful centered space. And then again, doing your affirmations from that place. And then you will also be able to feel which ones are really, you know, the ones you want that really are heartful. And Ooh, I'm glad you just, said that. <laughs> yeah. And the ones that are just coming from the ego. And I'll give you an example of that. Okay. Um, when I was uh, teaching and I was working in a different area at the time, really before I met Louise, but I was working with companies and their wellness, helping them develop wellness programs. And one of the programs was stress management. And so I started doing some short programs for um, some pretty well-known companies for stress management. And my ego self said, you know what, I can make a lot of money if I just start doing stress management programs for companies. And it never happened. And I realized that the reason it never happened was it was at a time when talking about spirit or something like that with a company was like, oh, no, that's too weird for yeah. us. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to share with people the spiritual life as well. And so I realized, you know, that's just out of my ego that I'm thinking about making a lot of money doing that. I'm not, I, it's not going to happen. And so I just let that go and said, okay, you know, next steps, I'm just guided into whatever the next steps are. So you've, you've, you've mentioned a couple of times ego, what is our ego and how do we need to deal with it? <laughs> Such a, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need, and there's some, you know, uh, disciplines that'll say we have to get rid of our ego, but I, I don't think we'll get rid of it, number one, because it's part of the organization of our whole being. Mm -hmm. And it's part of what actually motivates us to get up in the morning and do things, et cetera, et cetera. But what we generally learn growing up is that that part of us, that analytical part you mentioned, mm -hmm. is what is supposed to guide us and what we do every day, ongoing, to make for our work, whatever it happens to be. And it's the part of us that isn't particularly aligned with spirit, but it can be. And what I say is that we are most effective when our ego is in alignment with spirit. And so the ego part, you can see it all over the place. If you look, uh, you don't have enough mm -hmm. to look very hard um, to find people who are just following, you know, a, some way that they either want to make money or to be powerful or to be okay or whatever. And we talk about that a lot in Louise's work is that if you're waiting to make a million dollars or have the right job or have the right relationship or whatever it is to feel good about yourself, you're always going to be waiting. Yeah. You'll never feel good enough. And so you start with loving yourself and again, getting to that centered space within yourself where your inner wisdom knows what's right for you. It really does. But the ego sometimes says, no, 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 you got to do this. You got to do this to be okay. Or you've got to go down here. You've got to prove yourself somehow. And if we get away from that and just say, okay, we're going to do what the, the action part, which is part of our ego, along with our connection with spirit, then we're going to be making the most impact on the world for other people and for ourselves. And ultimately, who do we really admire? We admire people who are being of service. You know, oh, we admire you because you're being of service and your focus is on helping people live a better life and understand themselves more and use techniques that will help them. Well, I hear people say, well, you know, Constance and Dr. Patricia, that's that's fine. But my millennials taught me 
I need to, I need to go after the bag. And I'm like, what's the bag? That's money, the money bag. Mm-hmm. And, and so, so, you know, there is that I got to get online. I got to become a, a great content creator. I got to mm-hmm. get a lot of followers because I got to make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And and then I've had people say to me, well, you know, if you just serve all the social workers, counselors, therapists, and pastors, I know that serving, they don't have any money. What would you say to that? <laughs> well, I would say first, all those people who don't have any money need to do some prosperity consciousness work. <laughs> start on that. You know, to start oh, you on that. Funny. <laughs> right. But but I have seen that trend on exactly what you're talking about. I see mm-hmm. that trend on the internet, you know, um, just do this and you're going to make a million dollars or whatever. Yeah. And my husband and I are very comfortable. We're not millionaires and that's not what we set out to do, but financially we are very comfortable because we have followed what we were meant to do. Yeah. And I remember there was a space in my life when I actually gave up one job to start working on all of this full time and working with Louise. And there was a real lack right in the middle there where I wasn't making much money. And I remember meditating on that and saying, okay, what am I going to do? And the answer was trust. Everything's going to turn around in about three months. And my first reaction was, what do you mean? Everything's going to turn around in three months. (laughs) Three months seems like an awful long time. It did. It did. And it does take, you know, as you know, Constance, it takes perseverance. You know, it, it takes does. practice. And th- there are some things now on, on YouTube. Rick and I have a, a channel, Heal Your Life, with Louise okay. and, and our work. But it does concern me that I see uh, some of these things that say, you know, just meditate on this or do this 15 minutes and, you know, you'll overnight be a millionaire. Yeah. Or overnight, everything will change. And I do believe in miracles. Absolutely. And I have seen them in my own life and other people's lives. But most of the time, it's a process of growth. And even Louise would say later in her life to me, I'm still growing. I'm still learning. I'm still changing my unconscious mind and doing things even more effectively than I did when I was younger. And so it's a process. And part of it is being patient. And most of us are not very patient, are we? (laughs) We want it all to happen yesterday. We want want it to happen now. And, -hmm. you know, you mentioned something about gratitude. But I tell people, be happy now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because I'm going to be happy when. I'm going to be happy when I get married. I'm going to be happy when I get a lot of money. I'm going to be happy when. I say, well... You need to get in the vibration of happiness now, and that will pull to you what you desire. What is your take on that? People who want it now, and but and, and their thinking is, once I have that, once I am that, mm-hmm. once I do that, then I'm going to be happy and grateful. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's then putting something on the outside, isn't it, for your happiness yeah. rather than on the inside. And also I'm saying, oh, I'll be happy when I have a relationship. Well, we've all been in relationships and we know that there are challenges in relationships that you have to work through. And so even having a lot of money, I met uh, through a different channel, but I met a multi, multi multi-millionaire a number of years ago. And he was too scared. He and his wife were too scared to have their kids go outside because they might get kidnapped. Mm. Now that's not freedom. Mm-mm. That's not freedom. And Mm-mm. so, yes, use your skills and talents to go out there and assist in whatever way you are guided. And I think what you said earlier is that the financial part will ultimately come to you. And so we get back to being patient again, which again, that is a lot of people is not very, you know, challenge. It's challenging to be patient, let's say. But that is part of the process because it is an ongoing unfolding process. We have an unconscious mind that is so big. I mean, the analogy of the iceberg has been used, right? I mean, it's overused maybe a bit, but, but it's true. And we have people come to the training program who've been reading Louise's work and had her book for 15 years. They are amazed at how much more they uncover because Mm -hmm. they're in a space of unconditional love. And that's what's so powerful. 
being in a space of unconditional love that just allows more things to come up to be healed. And if we're paying attention, our life will tell us what needs to be healed. What's on the outside that needs to be healed on the inside to transform that. Um, and so good. that's a process. Well, lastly, time went by too fast. Talk to us about uh, imagination, visualization, seeing the pictures in our mind. I know you talked about that in your book. How important is that? And what would that look like for listeners? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and that's another addition onto affirmations. You know, affirmations mm -hmm. will give you some kind of visual, but the visualization can be done with your, with your meditation where you're actually imagining yourself, even if it's not the specifics, it's the feeling. Mm. Here's the feeling that I have. Visualization isn't just a mental picture. A lot of people say that they can't picture things in their mind, but if you can describe your kitchen or you know anything, that, then you're visualizing, really. You can see that in your mind somehow. But adding in that visualization, maybe it's you, you know, wanting to be a wonderful speaker that inspires people. And just wanting that out of your heart, not because, oh, you're going to be famous or something. Louise said over and over again, she was a simple person. She never set out to be a worldwide speaker or a worldwide author. She just kept doing what was in front of her, again, to serve people. And so with the visualization, you can get the feeling of what is it like to have a wonderful relationship? What does it feel like to have, you know, be able to serve people in, with my own skills and talents? And I do know one friend of mine had been visualizing that she was giving a speech somewhere and that she got a standing ovation. And she did, <laughs> which was great. But along the way, she was also preparing her program. You know, she didn't just go into it oh, with nothing. Yeah. She also was working on preparing her program. So the visualization is another part of your affirmations and really getting totally into that feeling. And however you can imagine what you're focusing on or what you're wanting to create um, is wonderful and just Doctor, allow that to be I tell you Dr. Patricia I can tell you this what you share comes from your being Thank I mean you. it's just in you I, I can feel it all the way over here in the ATL so so powerful so tell listeners how can they contact you what is uh, your website or uh, social media platforms how can we get your book all of the above <laughs> okay thank you so much and thank you so much i have so enjoyed just talking with you in this free-flowing uh, process it's been wonderful thank you so the the website our main website is healyourlifetraining.com healyourlifetraining.com and that gives you all the information about training in louise hayes philosophy as a workshop leader or coach um, my name patricia crane is on facebook and there are some other Patricia Cranes. So <laughs> it's always weird when your own name is up there more than once, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so, so, like so a, are you Dr. Patricia uh, Crane on Facebook? Not. It's just Patricia Crane. Okay. But I'm in Lake Arrowhead. So people can okay. look for Lake Arrowhead. And the YouTube channel is Heal Your Life. Just youtube.com forward slash Heal Your Life all together. And our channel and the Hay House channels are really the only official ones for Louise. And there are a lot of other people out there with some of the work, but we're the official ones. Uh, and then our, uh, let's see, Instagram is Heal Your Life Training. Heal Your Life Training. We don't, we don't use Twitter. We don't really use TikTok, um, okay. those kinds of things. My, My books sister made me go on TikTok, so... She's like, Miss Conta, you got to go on TikTok and share some of your content. And and it has been good. I'm not dancing, y'all, but I'm just sharing powerful excerpts. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. But I'd be happy to be in touch with anyone. If you go on healyourlifetraining.com, you can contact me that way. Or you can find me on Facebook under, you know, with Lake Arrowhead. And I'm happy to connect with anyone who wants any more information or just to, you know, let's connect. Thank you. I tell you, this was a, an easy interview. <laughs> well, well, mo mo most of mine are easy, uh, but but it was so just a good flow of the spirit between you and I. Don't you think so, Dr. Patricia? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. So well, And thank you so much. We're so honored. So everybody, make sure you visit her website, 
uh, this this woman, she's been in the business for a while. She has sage wisdom. She has wisdom nuggets. And, you know, I always say a coach can take you in in 20 minutes where, where it might have taken her 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so just being around that kind of wisdom can radically change your life. Uh, so make sure you share this um, show with your friends. And Dr. Patricia, thank you so much. And I'm going to let you go because you might want to go out and do a snow angel uh, in your front. <laughs> as soon as there's enough snow. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. In your front yard. Well, you. And you know, everybody, as I say, uh, you know, just my mantra at the beginning of the year is just more in 2024. Have a great week, everybody. All right. Thank you.